welcome to Coffee and Devotions. It is, let's see, Thursday, June 11th. This is where every weekday morning at 9 a.m. and on the weekends before my kids wake up, you and I get together, we read God's Word, and we grow in our faith. Well, this morning we are at Mark chapter 5, verses, let's see here, we are at verses 1 through 20. Mark chapter 5, verses 1 through 20. Let's go ahead and get some coffee. We'll pray, and then we'll get into God's Word. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you for your word. God, we pray that you would care for us and that you would bless us this morning. Lord, we pray that we would take heed, that we would be careful, that we would understand who you are and what you have done. Lord, we pray that you would care for us this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, Mark chapter 5, verses 1 through 20. Here we go. Then they came to the other side of the sea, to the country of the Gardenese. And when they had come out of the boat, immediately there met with him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit, who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no one could bind him, not even with chains, because he had often been bound with shackles and chains, and the chains had pulled apart by him and the shackles broken in pieces, neither could anyone tame him. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying out and cutting himself with stones. When Jesus saw him from afar, he ran, or when he saw, sorry, when he saw Jesus from afar, he ran and worshipped him. And he cried out with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with you, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I implore you by God that you do not torment me. For he said to him, Come out of the man, unclean spirit. Then he asked him, What is your name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. Also he begged him earnestly that he would not send them out of the country. Now a large herd of swine was feeding there near the mountain, so all the demons begged him, saying, Send us to the swine that we may enter them. And at once Jesus gave them permission. Then the unclean spirits went out and entered the swine. There were about 2,000. And the herd ran violently down the steep place into the sea and drowned in the sea. So those who fed the swine fled and told it in the city and in the country. And they went out to see what had, des- what had happened. When they came to Jesus and saw the one who had been demon-possessed and had the legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind, they were afraid. And those who saw it told them how it had happened to him who had been demon-possessed and about the swine. Then they began to plead with him to depart from their region. And when he had gotten into the boat, he who had been demon-possessed begged him that he might be with him. However, Jesus did not permit him, but said to him, Go home to your friends, and tell them what the great things the Lord has done for you, and how he has had compassion on you. And he departed and began to proclaim in Decapolis all that Jesus had done for him, and all marveled. Well, we have this beautiful passage here this morning, and we need to always start ourselves with asking, A, what is this about? A, what is this about? Well, yes, Jesus cast out the legion of demons from this man. And we can say that that's what he does, right? That's demons are cast into the swine. Yeah, that's that's true, right? That's that's what the New King James Version little heading here says, and, and that's fine to to kind of summarize the story. But there's some interesting things here, aren't there? This is a big passage, there's a lot going on, but let's just kind of soak in the flavor of it a little bit for a second. So what is going on here? Well, Jesus goes and he goes to the area on the west, or on the east side of the Lake of Galilee, and this is not a Jewish area. This is a pagan area. This is the Decapolis, and this is where the Thracians live. This is not this is not a Jewish area. We know it's not a Jewish area as well because we know that there are swine who are being fed. Now, maybe some of you live in the country and you think 2,000 pigs, well, that's not a big deal. Well, that's a huge deal, 
right? At that time, that is a lot of money, a lot of, a lot of value, and, and this, is, this is a big commerce area for non-Jewish people. This is a big agricultural area for non-Jewish people. And what do we find? We find a man there. And the, the picture of him is, is really, the, the image of it is, is dark. Right? They've, they've, this guy's crazy. He's out of his mind. He, they, the people have, have tried to wrap his hands with cords and they've tried to bind him up before, but every time they do it, it just breaks it open and, and they'll try to shackle him. They'll put metal shackles on him. And what does he do? He's, he's this type of madman and he's able to just break the shackles apart. And in this dark time, in this dark area, in the tombs is where this man lives and and he cries out at night, and he, he takes shards of probably pottery or sharp rocks, flint, something like that, and, and he often cuts himself. And so you have this picture of this madman, this man who is often without even clothing, and, and he's bloody, and he's dirty, and he lives in the tombs, and he cries out at night. This is a disturbing picture. And we see Jesus step into that disturbing picture. And right away, what is the response? Well, right away, this demon-possessed man is thrown at the feet of Jesus. And our passage tells us that, he, uh, and when he saw Jesus from afar, he ran and worshipped him. This is this idea of, uh, the Greek is the idea that it is that he throws himself down as if this person was his king. But it's the, it's the demons who Jesus talks to. What have, I, what have I to do with you, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I implore you by God that you do not torment me. Jesus, the Son of the Most High God. It is Jesus who has power to torment these, this legion of demons, this 5,400. I'm not sure if that's uh, that's what a legion was in the Roman army. I, I don't know if there were actually 5,400 demons inside this man, but the picture is clear. It's an ugly picture that Jesus steps into, and Jesus sends them into the swine over there. They get into the swine, and what do they immediately do? The swine run down the hill, and they go down into the water, and they all die. And that's the picture of this, this man who is demon-possessed and bloody and living in the tombs and, and mad out of his mind. The demons leave him and they go into the swine. And in the swine there, they run down into the water and they all die. And what happens? What happens after that? Well, the, the people who saw all this happen, they go into the town and they tell everybody what happened. And in the people's amazement, what do we see after that? What we see that those who fed the swine, they went into the city and they told everything that happened. Then they came to Jesus, this is all the people, and they saw who? The one who had been demon-possessed and had the legion. He was clothed. He was in his right mind. And Jesus has made this man whole. Jesus has made this man pure. Jesus has made this man of right mind. He's wearing clothes. He's sitting there. He's not cutting himself. He's not, he's not being tormented. And what do they do? Well, their response is, is that they're afraid. But they don't fall down and worship Jesus. Instead, what do they do? They say, get out of town. Right? They don't want that type of trouble there. They don't want that type of power there. They just... just Stay over there, Jesus. You, you need to just go, right? Our, our livelihood is gone, so you need to go. We don't know what you've done with this man who was crazy, and now he's sitting here in his right mind. Something is wrong. You need to go. You just can't be here. Just go. And they love the world. They love their comfort. They love just kind of the status quo more than seeing the reality of what this has happened to this man. And it's this man who, when Jesus, Jesus follows, okay, so he gets in the boat, and he's getting ready to cast aside, and you can see this man. 
It's almost as if Mark paints this picture as this man goes to the side of the boat, and it's almost like he grabs onto the side of the boat, and you can see his feet in the water, and he's begging Jesus, and this is the most sane he's ever been. And he's begging Jesus, please let me go with you. And what is Jesus' answer? Well, he tells him, go home to your friends and tell them what great things the Lord has done for you and how he has had compassion on you. Go home. Tell your friends and family how God has been compassionate to you, how the Lord has been compassionate to you. Who's the Lord in this story? It's Jesus. It's God the Father and God the Son. The Father has shown compassion, but it's Jesus, the Lord, in front of him who cast out these demons. I'm going to go ahead and in my Bible, I'm going to underline that. I'm going to underline the first part of, or the second part of verse 20 and verse 20, or 19, and then into verse 21. That's what I'm going to highlight in my Bible. I need to be able to find where I had that highlight button. I'm sorry. I think that's getting at the heart of what's going on here. So in the margin of my Bible, I would have, instead of Jesus cast out the demons, I would have something like, the Lord shows compassion. That's what I would write my, my Bible in the, in the about section. That's how I would summarize this. Uh, but you can disagree with me. I'd love to hear your thoughts. So that's our A, what's this about? Our B, what are we called, or what are, what's the best verse to summarize this? And now C, what are we called to do in response to this? Have you gone and told your friends and family of how the Lord has had compassion on you? Have you gone to the Lord and fallen at his feet and and begged him to have compassion on you? Have you gone and bowed before the Lord and, and pleaded that he might give compassion to your family members? Or have you been that crazy man who's been made sane and that the world doesn't want you anymore? And will you go and cling to the boat and plead with Jesus? But are you ready that he might say, no, you're not allowed to come to me yet. You're not allowed to come home because you've got work to do to go tell your friends and family. I don't know what you're called to do in response to this passage. Let me know. Feel free down in the comments to let me know or send me a message. I'd love to hear from you. Let's go ahead and pray. Lord, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you for your word. Father, we pray, Lord, that we would that we would be made whole. Lord, and that we would go out and tell our friends and our families with hearts full of thanksgiving for the many good things that you have done for us. Lord, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. You have shown such compassion. Lord, you have healed us. Thank you, Father. Lord, we pray that we would never lose sight of Jesus Christ, that we would never forget our first love. Please, Lord, let us not be lukewarm, but let us find comfort in who you are and what you have done. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, may God bless you today and fill your heart with peace. Bye.